OK, do you see my screen? Yes, your screen. All right. So uh, the whole purpose here is we have different types of functions. Let me go over the main types of functions and then you can um, use the graph paper and I'll, I'll just do a rough version of it and then you can adapt it for your problem. Mm -hmm. OK, so let's say uh, we, the first type of graph is um, quadratic. And quadratic function is going to take on, this is the parent graph. Parent graph is kind of like the starting point, and then we can kind of build off of a quadratic function. So y equals x squared is going to look like this. OK. All right. All right. So I'm just going to create one that is a variation of this. So I'm going to say y is equal to x minus 1 squared. You see how it's still taking on a similar form as x minus one as the x squared. I'm just doing, I'm just adding a little something to it just to um, make it uh, a little different from the parent graph. So parent graph is going to look like this. It's going to go right through zero, zero. But let's say I had x minus one squared plus one. That's just going to shift the graph a little bit off the center, off of the origin. Um, but um, let me do this instead. Let me just change this to be plus two. So that's going to shift the graph a little bit left. It's still going to be a parabola, but it's going to be a little bit. Um, uh, yeah, it's good. It's going to be shift off the center. Now this graph. Let's say there was a domain. That went from negative infinity to negative three. What that means is we're only going to sketch, we're only going to show the graph in this interval. Okay. So chances are the graph will, if the graph looked like this, we're only going to show the leftmost region of the graph. So only this portion will show up, most likely. OK, so I want to show you how you can take a graph and put it into Desmos and then be able to put it onto your um, your graph sheet. OK, now uh, I will. OK, I'm going to stop presenting and share my other screen. So you can go to uh, desmos.com. Right. And I'll send you this link later um, if you want to. Um, if you want to try it later. But uh, desmos.com, and then you're going to see graphing calculator. So you're going to type, you're going to click on graphing calculator. And I'm just going to type in that function in. So uh, it was x plus 2 squared plus 1. So I'm going to do parentheses x plus 2 parentheses and then squared. So there's the little caret button. If you do shift 6, you're going to see that little um, upside down v. And it's going to make it into an exponent. And then plus 1. So we see this graph show up. But we only want to show the graph. Let's say my domain is from negative infinity to negative three. So it's only going to show the graph to the left of negative three. All right. Now to help me find exactly the points that uh, that I need to put. I can click on this edit list. You see that little gear circle there. And then do you see that little 
table, convert to table. Yeah, I see it. Click on that. And any order pair that you want to type in, it'll give you the Y value. So I'm starting at negative three. So negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six. I just want to have enough so that I can create. I mean, some of these values may be a little bit too large for it to show up, but at least you can kind of have an idea what parts that you want to show. All right. So I'm going to write those order pairs down and I'm going to go back to my. Uh, go back to my other screen and graph that. OK, this is probably too big for us to see, so I'll go back to my screen. OK, I wrote those order pairs down. I knew that my graph is just going to show this portion of it because it's going to show that leftmost portion. So I'll create a second. This is where I'm going to build my piecewise. So I'm, I have, I'm going to have three graphs, but I'm only going to show a, a, a portion of each graph. And then whatever the portions I select, it's all just going to be kind of cutouts of those three separate graphs. So wow. here's my piecewise. So a piecewise function is exactly what uh, kind of the name suggests. We're just we're just graphing a portion of each graph and, and just merging them into the same on, onto the same uh, paper. So this I just want this graph to show negative three two. Negative four five. Negative six ten. So you see that I'm only showing this part of the parabola. The parabola continues, right? But my domain is only up to negative three. Yeah. So it's only showing this left portion. Right. OK, so uh, a second part uh, part of uh, um, second type of graph you got to do is an absolute value function. An absolute value function has a parent graph that looks like this. It looks like a V. So absolute value. Um, so here's what the graph looks like. Okay. And let's say this one has a domain of. I'm just going to create a middle portion, let's say from negative three to three. And I'm just going to make an adjustment with this parent graph. I'm going to add a number and subtract a number just so I can have something built off of the parent graph. I can also put a number out in front if I wanted to. Okay, I'm just creating a more, um, just building a function that is different than uh, the parent graph, but then still falls into the category of an absolute value function. Right. Next step. I'm going to go to my graphing calculator and see if I can pick out um, what the graph looks like between negative three and three. Back to Desmos. I'll go back to uh, oh, uh, this is an undo button here. Delete all. OK, so if I delete all, I can just create a new function here. So this is two. Absolute value. There is a um, button above enter. It's like a vertical bar. 
put that vertical bar there, x minus 1, close the vertical bar, and then minus 2. Okay, but I only want the graph to show between negative 3 and 3. So I'm going to go to my, go to that gear box, click on table. Okay. Okay, so it's showing me some values that I want, but I want from negative 3 to 3. I have negative 2 to 2, but I'm just going to include negative 3 and 3. So I'm going to write those order pairs down. I'm going to transfer them over to my graph. OK, good so far? Yeah. All right, so this graph is showing a lot more than that, but we're only going to show that we only want what's between negative three and three to show up on our graph. So I'll go back to my table or go back to my um, paper. Okay, so those are the order pairs I wrote out. I'm just going to graph those on my graph here, negative three, six. Now, if I have an overlap between two points, then I just want one to be open circle, the other one to be closed, so that I'm not going to have a failure of a, of a, a function. Like I, need, I need to pass a vertical line test. So it doesn't matter. I'm just going to choose one to be open, and the other is closed. Negative two, four. So I'm only showing the V for that portion. Right. And then one more type is a radical function. So a radical function looks like this as the square root. And that's the parent graph. The parent graph looks like this. Starts at 0, 0 and kind of curves upward. But I'm going to make some adjustments here. So I'm going to make this y is equal to square root of x, I don't know, plus 2 minus 3, just to give it some variety. But now let's say the domain for this is from three to infinity. Okay, so I have three sections. I have negative infinity to negative three. I have negative three to three. And then my last section, I'm going to just graph whatever shows up for this portion. So there's my function. I'm going to go back to my uh, graph, my um, Desmos. Delete all. I'll start over again. Square root. So you can just type in SQRT. And then the square root will show up. Does that make sense? SQRT. Yeah. You see that square root show up. And then just type in x plus 2. Get out from under the radical. And then you can do minus 3. Make sure. Okay. So my graph looks like that. But I only want the the right portion to show up. So I want to start at three. And I want to go from three forward. So I'll do three, four, five, six, seven, eight. OK, these aren't pretty numbers, but I can kind of estimate where they're going to be. And OK, so I'm going to write those down. Okay, 
I'll go back to my graph. Alright, so those are the order pairs I gathered from Desmos. I'm going to uh, transfer them over to my graph as best as I can. Those decimals seem a little strange, but I think we can kind of just work around it. OK, so three is at negative 0.76. So it's going to be somewhere here. Again, I, if there's any overlap, I want to make sure one is an open circle. The other is a closed circle. Negative right. 0.55. Uh, this should be further down. OK, these are just really like they're all the numbers will be really close, but they're going to kind of resemble like this portion here. Which is going to slightly curve upward slowly. I get 0.35. Five is. Uh, oh, this is going up really slowly. Three, four, five, six, seven. By seven, it's going to hit zero. And then eight is going to be 0.162. So it's going at a very, very slow pace. So we got a parabola, we got an absolute value, we have a radical, but we're only showing a portion of it, a piece of each graph. Um, but uh, I think for you, on the on in your direction, you're going to have to create, I believe, four graphs. So I think one is going to be. Hold on, let me check the directions real quick. Okay, so your direction says, okay. So you're gonna have to, four graphs. One is gonna go from negative infinity to negative five. The second one is gonna go from negative five to zero. The third one is gonna go from zero to five. And the fourth one will go from five to infinity. So, uh, I only did three graphs here, but the fourth graph, you can duplicate another one. You can do like, um, uh, you can do a quadratic, absolute value, radical, and then another quadratic if you want, but it's gonna have to split up into four sections. I did mine in three sections just for demonstration purposes, but then for you, you're gonna do it in four sections. Right. And then just make, make um, Desmos find all those order pairs for you. All right. Okay, does that help? Yeah. Okay, let me know if you have any questions and um, I'll look for your project when you're finished. All right. Okay, see you. Have a good day. Bye. Yeah.